Why is the... Oh, no! <laughs> okay, I, I know a lot of you are probably not into The Walking Dead. I know a lot of you are... I don't care about this at all. Why is the chapter called A? Oh, no! Not again! Not the A! Okay, let, let, me give a, let me give a quick lore recap. This is going to be very quick. I, I swear I'm not going to go on a tangent. Um, around like 20, 2016, 2017, The Walking Dead writers just started adding A's everywhere. Like the entire show, there was just a bunch of random A's that were supposed to be like cryptic hints towards something. And that kept going for like a decade. Just like A's. The letter A was a symbol. And it kept going. I, I hate the letter A now. If I see an A, I'm like, oh my god, not again. Oh no, please, please, Oda, don't tell me, don't tell me it's gonna be another A. Okay. Okay. Wait, it's not the message being cut off, right? That's why it's not an A. What if it, what if, what if it's gonna be Aka Inu? Okay, let's keep going. Um, Golden Harvest, Surrogate Pilgrimage. I'll pay my respects to the code of the Yakuza before I go. Very cute. Very cute. I need to read The Walking Dead. You should read it, don't watch it. Read it. It's much better. It's much better. Pirate Island. So what's he saying, huh? That there's buried treasure on the sea, sea floor all over the world? Don't be stupid. You think the whole world was it was the city of gold? Is is that Pearl? Oh no. Who are these other people supposed to be? Because I think that's supposed to be Pearl. That's Don Krieg and Jin. I'm gonna be real. I don't recognize Jin at all. Don Krieg, maybe. Pearl, obviously, because Pearl is a freaking clown. Pearl looks like a freaking clown. But Jin? Oh my god. This has got to be Oda, like, finally caving to, like, fan pressure, right? I, I think this is just, like, a, a wink at, at fans, you know? I don't think this is, like, a Jin's coming back into the story. He looks locked in, though. He looks locked in. I wonder if we're gonna go, like, full circle. Yeah, Captain Kuro, I wonder if we're actually gonna go, like, full circle and touch base with all the villains. Because the one that keeps gnawing at the back of my mind, I guess, is freaking Arlong. Arlong is the only villain that we haven't heard of ever since we beat him. Like, nothing about him. What's going on with him? I think, like, he as a villain was relatively straightforward, so there's not really much need for us to touch base with him. But still. Yeah, he's supposed to be an impel down. But I don't know what's going on with him. And he's 200 meters down. How will you get there? Uh, you'll be a sea beast snack. I don't know. I've heard there are ships that can go underwater. That's true and real. This is what we were talking about. You got the money for that? It'd be easier to make friends with a mermaid. Now there's a tempting idea. So wait. Is this a is this a mini Kuroto W? Is this like actually saying that like the reason why no one's found them is because sea beasts? Like circle around them? Like around all these cities? Because that's an interesting explanation. I think that makes most sense. I don't know, though. Uh, okay. Grand Line. That song before Nolan's Day. Oh, what a tale, Ock Ock. Oh, I remember these dudes. Ready for another dive? Now this is the stuff of dreams. Man, I love Jaya. Jaya was such a good arc. Is this, is this another chapter of reactions? I think it is. Okay. Navy uh, General Hospital. Are you alright, Kobe? So is he saying that the One Piece is? It's real. The One Piece is real. Wait, what? So is he saying that the One Piece is dot dot dot? So are Cricket's friends half mink? Honestly, a lot of the things we saw early on in One Piece, now Oda has just like written in as things. So back in the day, I was like, yeah, these two dudes, they look kind of wacky, but they're cool. And then later on, Oda actually writes in minks and it makes perfect sense, right? Like what the hell is um Moria? What is Moria? What is he? <laughs> Maybe we're gonna see a bunch more Morias that look like shallot heads. Uh, it sure is a lot to take in, huh? I feel like I'm going to pass out. I need to uh, jot. Uh, oh, okay, jot all this down. Okay, my mind can't keep up. I think this is another fourth wall break. The captain's recovering well, but he wants to be alone. This appears to be leading us to a pretty dangerous conclusion, don't you think, Prince? I sure do. Seems like an answer that shouldn't be. What the hell are these guys yapping about? These guys are yapping about something, and I don't know what they're yapping about. 
they're sensing they're on the right, wrong side. Well, the thing with Sword is that, like, they're already... Like, in my mind, Sword is already a detached branch that's basically in the middle. Because, like, to me, the obvious implication about Kobe and Luffy is that eventually, obviously, Kobe's gonna fight alongside Luffy, even though he's a pirate. That's been clear to me for a long time. I thought it could be cool if they're, like, 1v1-ing each other, sort of like Garp and Roger. But I think, like, before we get to that, it's gonna be a case of them fighting side by side. But... I'm just wondering if there's more subtext to this. Probably not. Kobe will become an admiral after all? A hundred percent he will. A hundred percent he will. Oh my god, another dot dot dot. Great. New world. Does she- Oh my god, finally! Where are you? Oh, Smoker, I'm at the G, uh, S General Hospital. I know this information- Wait, wait. That's it. I'm so shocked and sad. I'm so shocked and sad. That's literally it. Also, how many characters do we have now that, like, just have a... Like, a solo ship that's, like, a weird, wacky contraption? We have Mihawk, who's sailing around with, like, the weird... Weird... I don't even know what to call it. It's like a solo boat, right? We have Aokiji, who's just riding a bike across the ocean, which is cool, I guess. Now we have Smoker, who's riding a chopper across the ocean alone uh alkiji has this weird penguin ace also had one yes what is his bike pulling oh my god you're right that definitely looks like an actual because i was about to say maybe it's just waves but it's not it is definitely not just waves it looks like a big box with an x on it realistically what could it be is that a poneglyph does it make sense for it to be a poneglyph? That's kind of like the only thing that looks like a cube, I guess. Imagine he's pulling an ice box containing, uh, containing Garp since he's friends with Aokichi. <laughs> Bro got frozen in an ice cube. Yeah, I didn't even notice that. I, I think like a poneglyph is the only thing that makes sense, but why would a poneglyph have an X on it? Is it supplies? Supplies is the thing that makes the most sense purely from like a what could it be, right? It makes the most sense purely intuitively, but I don't think that is something Oda would specifically draw in and hide from us in the background. Because the last time we really touched base with him was uh, Punk Hazard, right? Like, we haven't really had much with Smoker ever since he saw Dofi. And that's when Al Kiji said the whole, I'm still me. Man, I don't know. You, you know what? I'm just happy about the fact that he's calling Toshigi, and that means they're gonna be back. And when people asked me, do I think they're gonna be back separately or together, I said, obviously it's gonna be together because they're a duo. Yes. Could be sent to Pirate Island to get Garp back. Man, I hope so. Imagine if Smoker comes back. Like, we've had like these three major parts of the story, right? Like we had post time skip, uh, pre time skip, post time skip, and now we have the final saga. So pre time skip, Smoker was OP as hell. Post time skip, Smoker was nerfed into oblivion. Like he was he was useless. He was a wet pool noodle. Uh it was very sad. So now we need to go back to him being OP. If he pulls up to Pirate Island and pops off, oh I'm gonna be so happy. I'm gonna be so happy. Uh okay. I I've talked enough about Smoker, let's keep going. Um I know this information is in bits and pieces. Thank you, Vegapunk. Thank you, Vegapunk. If only you could just tell me the whole thing. But if I were to say any, uh, any more, it would be speculation. Okay. Uh, just tell us, <laughs> what did Roger leave behind? Oda is really having fun with this, isn't he? He's just like adding random dudes. This is like that meme of the, the, the guy who uh, who called to Roger like in, uh, in the Logtown thing, right? The dude who actually started the One Piece uh, race. Egghead. Look, the barrier's coming down. Uh, what was that huge noise earlier? That scared me. It looks like the clouds have stopped extending outward. We've got plenty of room as it uh, as is. There's enough distance for the ship to land in water, but it sounds like there's a whole bunch of enemy ships right where we're uh, right where we'd land. Cola bottles are loaded. We can fire them off at any time. Okay, are you here, Yajin Bay? Almost there, but a hey, yo. We're on the heels of a mysterious monster. Wait, what? They are chasing him, bro. This is this is about to be freaking Eldering. Let's pop off. 
Why are you going on a detour? Get back here at once. It's not a detour. The mo oh, okay. So he's he's headed for them. Never mind. Never mind. I was like, hold up. Did they just like see someone strong? And Zoro is about to be like, okay, you know what? I'm a win. His presence is truly overwhelming. The five elders. Fishman Jiu-Jitsu. Piggyback. Two sword style. Restful paradise. I keep forgetting just how big they are. Like, the fact that Zoro is, like... Like, don't get me wrong, scale in One Piece is never consistent. Like, scale, unfortunately, Oda messes with scales a lot. Um, But the fact that Zoro is literally, like, the size of his head... Just messes with my brain so much. That's cool. He's still using two swords, though. Um, I don't mean, I don't mean to be rude, Zoro, right? But it might be time to, you know, just, like... First of all, get your bandana. Third of all... All three swords. Hmm? Kitetsu? So he recognizes the sword, that's cool. Wait, which, which one of these... Kitetsu? Isn't that the... Oh, wait, what? I'm dumb. I'm mixing the swords. It's his sword. Wait, 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 hold up, hold up, I need to investigate. Kitetsu swords. So it is the cursed sword he saw in Logtown. Okay, I thought so. Because I was about to ask. That whole scene of him, like, flipping the sword? And I was like, hey, yo. Are we about to complete the swords? Because you, you, re you remember the whole thing? we uh, They were talking about in Wano. If, like, all the so Oh, wait, no, that was my theory. That was my headcanon. And I don't think they talked about this. Because I was talking about how, like, if all three swords are forged by the same person. And you, like, truly understand, like, the craftsmanship of the blade. Maybe you, you can, like, merge all three of their hockey thingies, and that's how you, like, make, I don't know, black blades, and then pop off. I think I talked about this in one of my Wano videos, and I don't think that was actually ever stated in the series. Oh, both of them have a kit. Oh, another theory. Another theory. So what if this means... What if this is like a, like a Harry Potter situation? Where two swords of the same craftsmanship can't face each other. That could be kind of interesting. Because in Harry Potter, there was the whole, like, Harry Voldemort wands thing, right? I'm kind of hoping for that. I'm kind of hoping for that, because that would be a very cool situation where Zoro can fight the swordsman. And switching Sanji's and Zoro's opponents would also be really, really cool. Because then we would have a whole bunch of dynamics between Sanji and Zoro, like, coaching each other almost. I actually really, really want that to be true. Because usually it's like, oh, you're fighting a weaker enemy, yada yada. Imagine if they have to switch. Since they're D-Bud in the manga. Why do I keep saying D-Bud is debut? I mean, it makes sense, yeah. He's like a legendary so legendary elder with a cool sword, so it makes sense. Yeah, I wonder how they're going to go with these swords. I need to, I, I really need to read up on the sword lore. Because a bunch of them like have the same names and the same like craftsmanship, obviously. And it messes with my brain. Okay. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Right now, I don't know if Ode is just going to go for, like, Zoro getting all of them. I think it's kind of too early. Because, like, can you imagine if, if Zoro beats him and gets, like, the third sword? That would also imply that, like, the Elders are starting to go down, which I still think would be a bit too early. Maybe this is, like, a vibe check. This is, like, freaking, um, the Tree Sentinel in Elden Ring. Right? Like, you see him, but you're not going to actually fight him yet. Like, you might fight him, but then you're going to get blasted. Zoro will never get rid of the Wado Ichimoji. You know what would be cool? If he just carries one of them. Maybe not even just carries one of them. But maybe... Maybe he uses four swords. Four sword style. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're reading my thoughts. You're reading my thoughts. I think there was... um. I don't remember where this was. This might have actually been SAO. I think there was a thing about like how a character tried wielding three swords, but they felt like their teeth were going to fall out. It'd be very funny to see Zoro using four swords. Can you imagine a fighting style where he's actually juggling swords? Like he's doing wish wish and then he's like swapping swords midair? Bro, that'd be so cool. Anyway, uh, let's keep going. Let's keep going. The fact that Zoro actually just tanks him. I'm starting to think that like the five elders, like they're obviously... OP as hell, but like the Straw Hats can actually hold their own against them because we've now had Sanji like blocking their strikes. We have Zoro blocking their strikes. Freaking Frankie like tanked them. So I don't know. Gotcha. Zoro. Push off. We'll jump on. 
Now, while you still can. Northeast coast of Egghead. Where are you, Straw Hat? Hurry up. We can't last forever. It's just one ship. Forget the legends. Sink that old Elbaf junker to the seafloor. Why are they talking about forget the legends? Um, can't seem to get a connection through. Come on, Luffy. I'm almost there. Get the ship moving. Pro Pro's still laughing. What the hell? He's just gonna yell really loud? <laughs> Is he just gonna be, like, carried out? It'd be very goofy if, like, the giants just, like, run out. Does it make them weak? Makes the straw hats strong? Yes, it's all about relatives. Uh, but... I'm still gonna be interested to see, like, how... How, um, Oda, like, does this power scaling stuff moving into the final saga. Because my favorite thing about post time skip is that we got that vibe check. Like, we got annihilated, and only then did we, uh... Like, actually, like, have that victory lap in Fishman Island, right? And return to Sabote. I guess you can... I guess you can count Wano as getting defeated a bunch, because, like, Luffy... Luffy won against Kaido, like, 4-1 or something. He was knocked out, like, four or five times. And he also died. But, like, he still won. Like, we haven't had that Sabaody moment. So, I don't know. This arc is not following, like, any structure, so I've got no idea what's going on. Uh, okay. Oimo, Kashi, set sail. We're off, swing around, don't let him escape. Stand firm, they're fossil pirates from 100 years ago. Bro, you're, you're about to be cooked. Dry them off, boys. A bug, yo, yo, yo. All ships leave positions and focus on our target. I want an all-out assault. If this is, like, what the actual war for Elbaf is gonna look like, there's, like, a dude with a sword and, like, just a bunch of meat in his other arm. Sign me up. Sign me up. Uh, by the way. By the way. Uh, I saw that Murphy made a video about Ragnarok and Elbaf. I haven't watched the video, but I'm still thinking that's what we're gonna see. I'm I'm almost a million percent convinced that we're going to be heading to Elbaf and right on Elbaf, that's where the final war is gonna kick off and Elbaf is basically gonna be Ragnarok. And then after Ragnarok, we're probably gonna like face Blackbeard. Unless the Ragnarok thing is like Emu has a secret power of some sort. And like the weird creatures in the Florian Triangle or something are like actual projections and then we're gonna start moving. Um, but I think so. I think so. I don't think there's anything more uh, on the panel. Oh, there's someone in the background doing the Nika dance. I don't know if it's supposed to be the Nika dance, but it looks like the Nika dance. There's like a silhouette in the background. That's cool. Usopp still needs Mjolnir. True and real. Um, I was like very mixed about Usopp getting Mjolnir, but I've kind of come around on the idea and I'm, I'm like, yes, Usopp needs Mjolnir. You know what would be even better? If it's not even the real Mjolnir. That would be even better if it's not even the real one. The one, the only thing I'm still interested in about about uh, Elbaf and Ragnarok and all that is I want my Mimir or Mirmir, I don't know how you say the word. I want that theory to be true. I want for us to find out about the Void Century and for there to be a thing where Luffy loses an eye. And then he gets the eye patch. Then we have the final eye patch pirate. We've referenced Norse mythology through the Well of Mimir. And Luffy sort of becomes Odin, right? The problem is, in Ragnarok... <sighs> we probably we probably don't want Luffy to be Odin in Ragnarok, right? But, um... We'll, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We really don't want Luffy to be Odin in Ragnarok, I'll just say that. Okay, let's keep going. Um, what is the sorry display? Don't each and every one of, uh, one of you carry the justice on your back? Act like the heroes you are, not a bunch of scrubs. A Vice Admiral Bluegrass. Whoa, that put a hole in the ship. And I'll put one in you too. A Rock and Roll Blaster. <laughs> Such a dumb move. Rock and Roll Blaster. It's gonna be my new catchphrase. Rock and Roll Blaster. Um. Yeah, go Vice Admiral Doll. Love a good brawler. At some point the boar stopped chasing. Oh my god, I think I think we're actually gonna see like both of them just run out and Luffy's gonna be on top of their heads or something. Uh, isn't it like the original um, Little Garden art? Isn't like Luffy also on their head or something? I'm pretty sure in the original like splash panel. Oh no, Luffy is hanging in his beard. Never mind. Zoro is sitting uh, sitting on his head. Never mind. Never mind. Uh, now we could just hop on the ship. Where would he go? Yeah, the fact that he disappears probably not.
Oh, that's not good. Uh, so all of them said DPS the, the freaking boss. They're just burning the boss. Okay. Oh my god, it's gonna be exactly what I said. Okay, so all of the elders are now so are now just burning the boss, okay? So now they're just like popping all cooldowns, they're gonna burn down the boss. And at that moment, when this is happening, freaking Vegapunk says, Lastly, I have one final message to impart. To those scattered throughout the world. Hey, isn't that... It is the Iron Giant that attacked Marie Joie 200 years ago. What a coincidence, I'm certain of it. Who bared... Oda? I'm not a fan. Who bear the name of D? Don't you dare. Dot dot dot. Ace. Luffy. Luffy and Vice Admiral Garp. Eh? Within you, there is... Caption. And he gets blasted. Enough of this. Omega Punk. And it cuts out. So, two birds, one stone, right? So we got Dragon to say dot dot dot, just like just like you're saying, yeah. The dot 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 man is back. And we also got freaking Vegapunk's message being cut off. So now, what was he what was he going to say? Beep beep, is it is it actually over? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. God damn it. God damn it. God damn it. I ha I'm, I, I'm like of two minds about this. This could be either... This could be either like it goes out. It's like... Bzzz, zap, 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 zap. And it comes back on. Which would be freaking genius. It would be the best bait of all time. Or it's exactly what we predicted. And it's too early to find out about the D. Uh, the TCB title for this is... Maw. Uh, in the scan, their chapter is called Maw, and there's a class, uh, clarification that the last word symbol from Vegapunk's message can be translated to Maw. Is this one of those situations where this translation should be much more accurate? That's what I'm asking. Because the scans, if it just says Maw, Maw is a thing in Japanese. It's just like a, like a kana, right? So to me, this seems like a thing where we should take this. Inside all of you, there is a. Also, yeah, uh, I think this. I think this is like even further, further confirmation that like, I'm certain of it that it attacked Marie Joan. They were there 200 years ago. Yeah, exactly. It's just it's just like the like the squiggly thing and two two lines across. This is like literally a thing in Japanese. Even I know that one, and I don't know Japanese. I th I think a situation like this is where I would trust the official infinitely more because what i would suspect is that like it's a super specific thing in japanese that might begin with mo but like the word is actually completely different whereas in english it's going to be within all of you there is a which by the way tells us literally nothing this tells us literally nothing it's not even th within you there is a x this is this could literally be anything within you is what within you is a Soul, a devil, a a drive, a a dream, a what the hell? A vitamin D pill, maybe? <laughs> Among you versus within you, big difference there. Very, very true. Very, very, very true. They use a character that could also mean uh, also on its own or be the first character of a new word. Yeah, that's what I mean, yeah. Within you, there is a... I think if it, like... If it was something as simple as... A dream. A link. A connection. Something like that. Like, it would still be cryptic enough that Oda would just say it. I think it has to be something, like, much, much, much more specific. Within all of you, there is a what? It has to be something extremely specific, and that's why it's cut off. That's kind of, like, my... Immediate thought. Because if it's something like super thematic or something, I don't think it would be cut off. I don't think it would be hidden at all. Because even if he like says within all of you there's a shared dream, like it doesn't mean anything. Like we know that like a lot of One Piece is about freedom. But like the definition of freedom, like look at Blackbeard and look at Luffy. Like both of them strive for freedom. 
but their freedoms look completely different. So that wouldn't even be a reveal, you know? I think there has to be something that actually affects the... I wonder if it... Ha I wonder if it has something to do with the final Poneglyph. Somehow, like, the final Poneglyph is not actually a Poneglyph, but it's... It's them. Which would, by the way... If the final Poneglyph... Is within them... Somehow, I have no idea how... But somehow, like... Let's entertain this idea. If it is within them... This would also... Answer the whole triangulation problem, right? Like, if you have three of them, you could triangulate its location. So if there was, like, a magical component that is the fourth key... Like, you can find the, the, the One Piece with three, technically. But it's the person that's the fourth. Not the location. It's the person with the D in their name. I don't know. It's like when Culver's final message to Sabo got covered by the panel. But since that's where the message got cut off, it seems to be more important for the elders to hide that part of the message than anything before it. I guess. Yeah, I, I think it has to be something to do with, like, actual mechanics of the One Piece, actual mechanics of the Void Century, actual mechanics of something. I don't think it's gonna be something generic, something mysterious, something like that. I think it is something extremely specific. Which sort of almost makes me inclined to believe that there might be more. Because now I'm just thinking about, again, like, the whole you were too early stuff. Now that the message is over, do you think Vegapunk knew about emo? Is there someone who is... There has to be, right? Somehow, someone who has compiled the full message that Vegapunk said. This is from... Pi Should I trust pirate folk? I think this is correct. Okay, let's read the whole thing. Let's read the whole thing. <clears throat> I've committed two sins. Therefore... <laughs> Reach the precipice of the world is drowning. The Void Century is still ripe with mystery. However, there are some who have learned the truth. The King of the Pirates crew. When they learned all of the true history, why did they drift apart without telling anyone? Why didn't they act on it? I realize I have been quite vague on this point. However, I can't add anything further onto uh, other than pure speculation. Based on everything we are hearing, I don't think there is any concrete evidence that Emu, uh, that Vegapunk knows about Emu. I think he might suspect that there is something more, but I don't think he like knows anything about Emu actually. I think he's only ever had contact with the elders. That makes the most sense to me. Number two, the Roger pirates all scattered apart. Imagine the whole message was in one chapter. Bro, this was like a freaking book. The message is so long. I didn't realize how long it was. Which, by the way, very good of Oda to actually manage to fit something that long across just like multiple chapters and make it very easy to read. I think it was like incorporated very, very well. That was a lot of text. And a lot of that is literally just lore. It was a lore dump if I've ever seen one, but it was very natural. I liked it. Uh, number two, all of the Roger Pirates scattering. I wonder if there is like a piece of information that they know that the person who will actually find the one. Okay, let me explain my whole whole thought process before I get to like random stuff. Roger was too early, right? They found the One Piece and they went their separate ways immediately. And I don't think there are like any of them who actually do anything together, basically. I guess the closest people we know of is freaking Shanks and Buggy, but neither one of them actually made it, you know? So wh what I'm thinking about is what if they split up with the assumption that at some point, the upcoming King of the Pirates, the person who won't be too early, will need something from them. And that's why they spread up. It's like that meme of like the, the people who know the co uh, co Coca-Cola. Why can I not say the word? The Coca-Cola formula. They can't be like on the same plane, right? It's that kind of vibe. Like, they split up because they know something. I feel at least one of the Roger Pirates is chilling on Low Star Island. That would be cool. That's like the only thing I can think of right now. That they spread up because there might be like some sort of clue that the people with the D in their names need. Because that feels like, a, like it's a big part of his message, right? Like, like really in his message, there is the fact that the planet is sinking, that the first pirate was Joy Boy. He doesn't know a lot about Joy Boy, but he knows that he was, like, fighting against the, the world government. He had a big alliance that the world is sinking again and that there are, like, weird continents. And that Roger's crew all spread up. Those, those are, like, the really the big, big messages of him. Or alternatively, if they learned of everything there was to learn about the true history, maybe they spread up not because of the One Piece, 
but because they need to, uh, like, like they know the secrets of the weapons, basically, right? And by splitting up, they might be able to prevent the war from actually heating up again. Something like that. Because that would also make sense with the speech, because a lot of the speech is about the ancient weapons and sinking the world, and about the war. So, because I'm just thinking about this from like a, Oda sits down to write a story and to leave clues. By incorporating Roger into this speech that is all about war, would also make sense that Roger was in some way tied into this war. And because the world is now sinking, and the Roger pirates split up, well maybe they split up because they know of some way to stop this war, help this war, or potentially destroy the weapons. I don't know. Laugh is a weapon that sucks water. Honestly, honestly, the fact that Oda did the whole, um, whatchamacallit, what I'm about to tell you is so preposterous that you might even burst into laughter. I wouldn't even be surprised. Now, I made a joke theory. It, it, I, I swear it was a joke. I, I wasn't being serious. Um, I think there is like a... I think you can find a little bit of sense in the theory that the One Piece might be a wormhole through the planet. I'm not going to explain it now, but if you like really, really think about it, I think there is a possibility that it could happen. Like, the One Piece is just a hole. Asking Momo to open Wano, which we know Pluton is at Wano. I completely forgot about the fact that Odin was also with them. Hold on. I somehow completely forgot about Odin. Yeah, this, this throws a big wrench in my entire theory. I didn't even think about that. Like, the fact that you actually thought about opening the borders. The only thing that, like, kind of makes me think again in the opposite direction is maybe because, like, they found the One Piece, they actually hoped that it would, like, everything would be good, you know? Maybe Odin was kind of just naive. But I don't know. Are you saying the One Piece is a big toilet and Roger was too early, too early because the water level was not high enough for the flush yet? Something like that. Something like that, yeah. Something like that. Arthur dropped a video saying that uh, that the Mo was lost in translation. Uh, let me look at let me look at Archer's tweets. I'm not gonna watch a video now, but let me see if he's tweeted about it. This is Archer, the Library of Okura. We all know him. We all know him. Focusing on Vegapunk's message, though, in his final word, uh, words he mentions, and one last thing, allow me to deliver this message to those bearing the name D scattered across the world. Within you, there's Mo, and then the call cuts off. As Warkyuri slams into the Iron Giant, causing it to tumble around, and for the transmission, then Momoshi inside to malfunction. Unfortunately, we literally get one single syllable to work with here, which isn't a much, yes, but this is Japanese, so there's still something we can extrapolate from this. First and foremost are the words that precede it. Vegapunk clearly- oh yeah, this is, this is actual, like, Japanese freaking grammar. Maybe he actually has very good insights about this. Uh, within you, which is complicated as both in English and Japanese, it can be in interpreted in two ways. For one of the most logical meanings is within you refers to among uh, among the group. Okay, you, you wanna you wanna know something dumb? That's not how I thought about it. I thought that there's like within you within you the person. Um, maybe he intends to say that among them there is a traitor of sorts, something like that. Perhaps referring to Teach being the only member of the D clan who seems to be actively working against the Dawn, with Rocks having seemingly preceded him. But within you can also be interpreted more literally as actually being within them, as in within each of their bodies. I actually like this idea, and it would be very, very cool if the reason why- Oh my god! Theory time! What if, what if a long, long time ago, you know how a lot of people have had the theory that like the people, people of the D-lineage are like the original pirate crew or something? Imagine if the reason why this war started was a betrayal from within. And maybe, maybe. That was Emu. Maybe that was Emu. And Lily. Lily didn't want to betray the others. And that's why he got jealous. <laughs> um, each of their bodies, the Japanese words here is Naka, which literally means in the middle of or inside of. So it could uh, actually refer to the members of the D-Clan. Emu D. Jones. Yes. So we're uh, possessing the something inside of them, whether it's some power, will, or other thing. Vegapunk follows this message with a single character, Mo. In this case, Mo is written as its own hiragana, uh, meaning that it's not trying to be an English-sounding word, uh, as that would use katakana. Very true, very true, and it doesn't seem to be a part of a larger word, as that would usually be written in kanji, that, though it could be cut off. So we, we literally don't know any of this. The possible readings here, the most obvious interpretation being that there is among them like another one, 
something additional exists within them that isn't a part of them entirely. I think... The, I'm just saying, the Parnoglyph idea is kind of cool. Just saying. Uh, carry inherited wills with them. Though inherited wills... Exactly, I was about to say. Uh, which seems to be the will to wish the dawn of the world, as even Lily yourself mentioned. But generally, as we understand, inherited will is more of an abstract concept, right? But what if there's more to it? Something more physical? After all, according to... By the way, this is why I also thought that freaking Roger is a... Um, or Luffy is a literal reincarnation of Roger. This happened after Brook. Because we got to see Brook's soul, and my thought was like, Okay, so souls are a tangible thing that can actually come back from the underworld back to the overworld, right? So what if Luffy is just a reincarnation? Think about that. Um... Acor uh, according to Rosinat Rosinante, uh, the D-Clan are the Fateful Clan, a clan that seems to have influence over fate. Several characters have pointed out uh, this in regard to Luffy, with how he seems to be able to influence fate in some way or another and always survive no matter the impossible odds. This makes them natural enemies of gods, or in other words, emu as we've long since speculated. I still think... <laughs> Challenge. Don't mention Davy D. Jones. Impossible. Um, I still think there is a dimension of um, him potentially, like, restoring their ability to swim. Because, like, they in some way would face Davy D. Jones. Because uh, Davy, Davy D. I, I'm, I keep calling him Davy D. Jones. Now, Davy Jones' locker is the thing that, like, pulls things to the underworld. Or, like, the bottom of the sea. Right? And if they're enemies of gods. And enemies of devils. Because, like, devil fruits are not actually devils, right? So gods are not actually gods if we flip them around. And one are god fruits, the other are devil fruits, you know? So we, we flip those around. Perhaps the sea devil, Davy Jones, maybe we can swim again. Enemies of nature itself, you know? Uh, okay. It's more obvious than, uh, than what you might think. What if Vegapunk's message actually means that they may also exist? Wait, what? These are patrons, right? These are patrons. Wait, 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 wait. But perhaps, think about it this way. Is that they may also exist within the D-Clan. It's actually the... <laughs> I was actually trying to read what it says and I just freaking realized I think he's... I think he's being cheeky. I don't think there's supposed to be anything here. Oh my god. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. My current thinking is that there is, uh, there is like something to do with uh, what you call it, uh, with the A. I don't think the Mo is an actual thing. That's like my immediate reaction. What if it's the Will of Davy? Davy is Joy Boy's real name. Honestly, if I, uh, I've said this before. If I get this one right, I can retire. I can retire. That, that's all I care about. I want to get two theories. Davy D Jones. And, um, the connection between Mihawk, um, Kuma, and Nika. Because all of them have the cross. Just saying. Just saying. Just saying. Freaking Mihawk has the circle eye. Zunisha has the circle eye. Emu has the circle eye. Mihawk has a cross. Kuma has a cross. The cross is Nika. So, as you can see, there's this smooth connection between these two completely different things. Just saying. Uh, stuff like green blood and the human genome project. So the within you could be based on that. Very, very good point. And I think you're right. I think you are right. I think... I think there is something much more special. And I think that, like... This goes back all the way to Alabasta. With Robin asking, do you know what's with the D? I want it to be Emu Davy Jones. I'm Davy Jones would go so hard. Oh my god, you're actually riding fire. Imagine if that's what it is. It's like... Eam. Eam Davy Jones. <laughs> it's so dumb. But that would work perfectly though. Because that would be the Sailor's Devil. And they've like re Oh my god. They have recontextualized Devil Fruits to be Devil Fruits. Even though they grant wishes, right? And they've recontextualized themselves as gods. So if we flip this whole thing completely upside down, and the god, uh, the dev uh, the devil of the sea, is emu. Makes sense. I think it'd be genius. Um, for next chapter though, predictions for next chapter. I think, I think there is a thirty percent chance. Thirty, no more. 
30% chance that the message comes back on. I'm not going to give it more than that, but 30%, 30% seems good. Other than that, though, it seems like all the elders are now actually pursuing the giants. Is the giant going to get back up? I don't think so, because I think the whole thing with the giant is that like it's barely moving around because it just like doesn't have doesn't have the energy, right? Unless, unless there is some sort of weird thing where Luffy grabs like the like the freaking what's it called the mother flame and throws it at the giant and is like, yo, giant, I heard you're hungry. And then he just throws it at him and then the giant pops off, which would be kind of funny. It would be kind of funny. And then the giant could, like, hold him off while we escape. First of two parts is the escape. Um, I have... Actually, I have. The Wano... But, uh, no, but actually, I haven't. How long do the escapes actually take, take in manga? Because the Wano... Like, we left Wano within the space of a single chapter, but that was, like, notoriously rushed. Like, the end of Wano was too fast. By every stretch of the imagination, it was way too fast. How fast are these escapes usually? Usually one chapter, maybe two. So maybe it is. Maybe next chapter we're actually off. And I mean, at, at this point, like we have... Yeah, so we have like all the giants with us, right? So I think like there's a very good chance that we're just off to Elbaf and that's it. But anyway, um, I think I've basically theorized all I can theorize. I've once again gone down the route of Davy D. Jones, which is like, you know, a good sign that we're, we're running on fumes. Uh, but yes, thank you for joining me today. If you want to keep up with all the copyright stuff, Twitter and everything else, I'm going to be ranting for probably a long time. If not, there is a main channel video coming out in a few days. Uh, the the uh, Attack on Titan one. Hopefully. If it doesn't get blasted too. And if you don't care about Attack on Titan, on the 20th, there is Elden Ring DLC. Well, tw 21st, I think, technically. Maybe the 20th. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's like time zone stuff. Elden Ring DLC. I'm playing through the whole thing on stream completely blind. I know nothing. I know a lot of people have already gotten to play it. I haven't watched anything. I haven't watched the Vati video. I haven't watched anything. I'm going in completely blind. So that's going to be fun. Anyway, thank you for joining me. I must depart. Uh, so all I have to say is that there is this one more...